Hello guys. Welcome to Top Anime Sensei. This video is the continuation video after Unexpected Guest. So if you have not watched it, then please watch it. The link is in the description. So without any further delay let's start. But before we start please like, subscribe and press the bell icon for more updates. However, this was a close one. Addictively playing games would lead to failure. I needed to remember this lesson well and swear to moderate my playtime in the future. Everything should be in moderation. I needed to be more careful in the future. The Council, the Western States Council, was made up of different nations surrounding the Great Jura Forest. The councillors elected by each nation would attend the meeting in Ingracia every month. Strictly speaking unlike councils run by nations, the main goal of the council is to maintain everyone's financial interests. They wouldn't put smaller nations on lower priority and instead start off from the point of equality, people would cooperate with each other. All of the members aimed to uphold the idea of defending the good of all humanity. The good of man referred to maintaining the circle of survival for humans. Apart from taking care of monsters, they also needed to handle droughts, typhoons and earthquakes, they had a duty to draft out plans to respond to crises. Also, the policies on importing and exporting surplus food, specialties and other goods differed from nation to nation. Due to this reason, negotiation on these subjects became very difficult. Therefore, the council only discussed motions relating o actual rescue efforts. It was not easy and it would potentially lead to a series of problems as well. The council was funded by each nation and the proportion obviously would differ. The fund would fluctuate depending on the size and scale of the nations, yet at the same time, all nations shared the same privileges. However, with no restrictions to this rule nations were no longer equal to each other. Thus, another rule was set. For every new councillor added to the council, their percentage of the emergency fund would also be raised accordingly. As mentioned the council's actions were not directly related to national interests. However, it was still a convenient venue for the more powerful nations to show off their strength. The more say a nation had in the council, the more likely they could turn things to the favor of their own nations, and in times of crises they would also be able to protect their own nations first. Motions such as the distribution of acquired funds would be decided by majority votes within the council. As they were about to make contact with the newly risen Farmain as a more troubling issue came up, the rise of Tempest. This naturally led to the council being shaken internally. After the Tempest founding festival the council held an emergency meeting. It was pandemonium, the councillors argued in chaos. Even Hanada Sakaguchi was invited to observe the chaotic state of the council, since she knew demon lord Rimuru in person she was invited as an eyewitness. Hanada could have refused, unlike the Freedom Association, the Western Holy Church was not a subdivision of the council. While both parties could mutually benefit from each other, they were two separate organizations functioning under different systems. As the head of an external organization, Hanada had no reason to answer their invitation. However, after learning what the topic of discussion would be at the meeting this time Hanada decided to participate. The motion whether to allow the Tempest Federation to join the council. The topic this time would provide vital information about the future of the Western nations, with that in mind Hanada decided to show up. She was rather repulsed by the council members that fell into disarray. So this is how much chaos ensues after a bunch of useless tools gather in the same room. When it came to the Holy Knight's own meetings, Hanada was in charge of everything, as a result there were no major conflicts and less time was needed to settle the discussion. In worst case scenarios, I can always shut everyone up by force. It had always been Hanada's policy to employ more practical means of persuasion in resolving issues during their own conferences. She also attended the meeting in Tempest the other day. Even with all those shockingly important figures attending, the important motions were passed swiftly. Hanada couldn't have imagined such a scene prior for the entire time she was there she couldn't help but think. But I suppose I can make that an exception, isn't it about time that we have a more constructive way of discussing issues? She had always experienced more constructive conferences, to her the current conference was a complete mess. That nation is definitely worthy of our trust. I think we must let them join. Even if you say so, this is the demon lord we are talking about here. He seems to be able to communicate with that storm dragon, if we were to piss him off what's to say that he won't set that dragon against us. There's no need to worry. As the saying goes he's a donkey in a lion's hide, the demon lord himself probably doesn't have much power. How laughable. Then how would you explain how he managed to reach a tie with Hanada-san over there? 
we must assume that the demon lord himself is also very capable. And so, different parties with their own twisted opinions refuse to reach a consensus. What an idiot! You dare to talk about that when I'm right here? It's pretty impressive how empty-headed someone can be, Hanada thought to herself. These people were seriously discussing who was stronger while Hanada herself was present, that was truly amazing to her. Listen carefully now during their founding festival, Demon Lord Rimuru said that the whole of the Great Jura Forest is under his command, but at the same time, he also said that he wouldn't allow any monsters to go outside the forest. Indeed in our nations, many people have lived in fear of the monsters, what the Demon Lord has announced is the saving grace to them, in fact since the birth of the Tempest Federation, the disasters brought upon us by the monsters have also been reduced. Quit spilling nonsense. Have you all been brainwashed by the Demon Lord? All of the monsters in the Great Jura Forest were managed by Demon Lord Rimuru. A lengthy border connected many different nations to the Great Jura Forest, and those along this border all benefited from the founding of the Monster Kingdom. There were also the nation's neighboring Tempest, some nations on the other hand, felt threatened by other factors. And due to these different geopolitical predispositions, they all had different opinions as well. The nations welcoming demon Lord Rimuru's nation were all neighbors to Tempest, they all attended the founding festival and witnessed the prosperity of that nation. It didn't matter if Tempest was the monster kingdom, if it could benefit their own nations, it was welcome to stay, that was the stance of these nations. On the opposite side of the spectrum, the nations that had other threats to deal with were uncertain about their decision, these nations were under the protection of the Freedom Association and the Holy Knight Order, therefore they had less problems caused by the monsters, this was the same for every nation, it was already taxing enough to maintain their current status quo. The sharper nations had already begun to strategize about how they could use Tempest to their own ends. However, some nations never participated in the nation's founding festival, and some nations didn't want to trust monsters from the get-go. As they continued to argue, the weaker nations could only side with the majority. As for the stronger nations and their vassals, they mostly agreed with Tempest's addition, with their own safety in mind, they also considered how much profit they could gain as well. Those who were skeptical towards Demon Lord Rimuru's policies held the opposition, these people blindly believed that if anything were to happen, they would be the first to be attacked by the Demon Lord and thus frantically opposed the decision. Some even argued that the nation's neighboring Tempest had all been bought by the Demon Lords and were traitors. With such conflicts of interest, it was only natural that the council would be in turmoil. If we were to take a step back and observe, there was nothing more idiotic than this. But with that being said, most counselors were merely trying to protect their own nation's well-being. Hanada could relate to the feeling, which was why she kept silent, but, then we should allow them to join. If they wanted to join our ranks we should welcome them with open arms. Then we can ask them to bring offerings. Um, that is a good idea. If we were to be hostile against them, we would only be repeating Pharmacy's mistake. However, we must make sure that they understand their standing. We should see if they were willing to abide by the international laws that we have drafted. It shouldn't be a problem. Has everyone heard the tragedy of Duke Musa the Foolish? I thought not. It's not a story the monsters would tell you. It's a Rosso legend. Yes, we all knew about this. The problems were mainly caused by counselors sent by the larger nations, they were already holding information that was not accessible to most. Those poor small nation counselors, they were forced to make a choice without even knowing, it's no different than them forfeiting their votes. Ignorance is a sin too, and not knowing the correct information would become a huge loss in itself. However, since their conclusion was to allow the Tempest Federation to join the council it's exactly what I wanted. The goal of the large nations aligned with Hanada. While this was certainly a disservice to the weaker nations, it was the right choice in Hanada's opinion to not help them out here, all she needed to do was endure for the time being. What Demon Lord Rimuru is planning doesn't matter, it matters whether he can be useful or not. Indeed, we are all worried about the movement of the East these days. If the Demon Lord were to make up for our military strength, there's no reason for us to reject them. The East, could you be referring to the Empire? Do you mean they are on the move? But now Veldora occupies the Great Jura Forest. Johan's words caused an uproar among the counselors, and soon enough all the attention in the room was on Johan alone. Now we've gone down to the real business, Hanada thought. And following this exact playbook, Johan had managed to dominate the scene. As you are all aware, the Eastern Empire, the Eastern Sovereign Alliance of the Nazca Namriam Ulmeria Empire's military units have moved out recently, 
According to reports by the merchants coming out of the area, they have been actively conducting military drills. Johan's words calmed the hall down immediately. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you guys have not watched the previous parts, then please watch them. The links are in the description. And don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon for more updates.